What's up, world? We back. This is the Elusive Podcast, ELSB as you will. I'm your host, Nathan Dante. This is episode 16. I've been waiting for it. It's finally here. Alicia Keys' new album, Keys, is out. I've been sitting with it since it came out. It is now Tuesday, December 14th. And yeah, it's been in rotation since, and I've been trying to pick out my favorites from the album, but it's just constant rotation. Uh, Only You, which is what this record is, is one of my favorites. So, the album's been out for a few days. It's been in rotation since it dropped. I'm trying to pick my favorites and sort them into my Alicia Keys playlist, which I haven't done yet because it's hard to pick between the originals and the unlocked versions. So, it's like, which versions do we like more? Which ones flow better into Alicia's past records? Uh, I do like the unlocked version of Only You, but I also like the original version of Only You. So, yeah, uh, I heard, I mean, I saw a lot of people saying that they felt the album is chaotic because it forces you to choose between the two versions. But I do feel like you can put either unlocked or originals on, listen to it straight through, and it'll be a vibe either way. So if you want that classic Alicia Keys piano driven music, listen to the originals. If you want the new sampled, uh, more up-tempo version of the album, listen to the unlocked version. Uh, Alicia did explain it best by saying that, think of Empire State of Mind, Jay-Z's song featuring Alicia Keys, and then think of Alicia's Empire State of Mind Broken Down solo version, and that'll give you a taste of what Unlocked and Originals is. Originals being the Broken Down piano version, Unlocked being Empire State of Mind, Jay-Z's version. So, while I was uh, on Twitter again, since we since we were talking about it, um, not even on Twitter, uh, the video for Old Memories dropped. I just watched it today, and aside from the video dropping, I did see the Alicia Keys store finally being updated to include merch and the album and you know i'm just sitting here waiting for the vinyls where are the vinyls alicia (laughs) i need a vinyl i need the vinyls (laughs) aside from the vinyls uh with the old memories video the key (laughs) i need one i need one alicia i need one of those keys uh that was in the video um I needed the keys way back when uh, I think she had the the key earrings. I needed that then, but I also need this key design that's the logo on the album. I need that earring, keychain. I need I need all variants of it. Uh, Alicia or whoever's made made the whoever made it for the necklace in the old memories video. uh, Please. Uh, team up with Alicia and add that to her merch because I need one. Um, yeah, I was g- looking at that that key design and trying to incorporate in it into a design that I was gonna do. As you can see with my my little merch box here, uh, I, I wanna 
figure out what to put that key on because I need it in my house. Uh, I might, uh, I might, you know, design this little background with some some Alicia Keys stuff. <sighs> but uh, if you don't know, uh, my creative brain um, kind of goes back and forth with design. So like, I can never stay with one thing. So. Uh, I was preparing my, my, my little magazine wall there. Those are some sample designs I made for our new magazine covers. And since hanging those up, I've changed the magazine design once again. Uh, plus, these are completely different from the original magazine design. So, yeah. So, trying to figure out what to put on this back wall. Um... It's gonna change every day, so I haven't uh, figured that out. Uh, I did have some brandy stuff that I was gonna put here. Uh, I should have put my Alicia Keys stuff here since we're talking about Alicia Keys, but yeah, uh, or I'll just stick with my magazine covers. Uh, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, diving into Alicia Keys, Keys album. Uh, Outside of only you, um, I was sold when the the La La record dropped. Um, Best of Me just was icing on it, the cake, and then the album itself uh, speaks for itself. So for the people, like I seen a few um, comments saying like this is her best album since Element of Freedom. Um, I guess, uh, I guess, <laughs> uh, did we just skip over Alicia, which came out last year because I, I felt that was a solid project. Um, but yeah, um, can I play some Alicia? Yeah, Alicia was a solid project, so I don't know Did people just forget that that dropped. Um. Crazy ass love is is that part right there? Like the original is dope, but like the mixing on the unlocked version is so dope. I love that record. Um, and then, as I said in the previous episode, um, "Best of Me" was on repeat, and. Um, like Alicia could just sing to me, do you understand over and over? And I would just, ah, that, like, do you understand? I can't do it like Alicia, but you know. And I can't figure out which version of uh, Best of Me I like. Um, both. Both versions. Um, both versions were. <laughs> I feel like I play the originals version more, but that unlocked version with the Barry the Barry White sample. Um, every time I hear it, it just makes me think of uh, Destiny's Child. No, no, no remix. That part right there. That's all she needs to sing. That part right there. Uh, 
I'm just so happy the album is out and it's as great as I was expecting it to be. Uh, La La, Best of Me, Old Memories, which the video just dropped. Uh, I'm assuming that's the next single. Uh, Daffodils is a great one. Only You, I've said that's my favorite, which is why we started the episode with Only You. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Love When You Call My Name, love that one. Love Plentiful with Pusha T. Um, Dead and Roll. I'm, I'm just naming the whole track listing by now. Nat King Cole's a great one. Is It Insane is a great one. And then uh, Keys. That that piano uh, interlude. Fire. Um, uh, um, do you understand? Do you? Do you understand? Questions that he answers. Um, uh, am I out of the loop? Because I have a question that need answers. And if this, yeah, I need a scream, man. <laughs> We've discovered. I see. I, I, I don't know how. Um, I mean, I do know how because most of these podcasts have team members and a whole video village so they can pull off all of this stuff but me it's a one man band show over here and you know it's gonna take some getting used to this setup and figuring out how to navigate all of this stuff over here so bear with me um if you're watching on youtube if you're listening on apple Podcasts, uh yeah it's not a big deal as it is to see me like trying to fumble and get everything in order. <laughs> but uh, uh, she's been posted so much stuff that I gotta like look through her timeline and find it again. It should be in my likes, but uh, I felt it was easier to just come to her page and play it from there. But of course. Uh, I don't see it. Uh, I think I scrolled back too far. I can't even tell. Um, you get the best of me. Uh, couldn't have been that far. Wait, wait, wait. Nope, not that one. <sighs> Terrible. Might have to edit that part out, but yeah. Um, let me see if I can find it from my page. No, because Instagram on the web don't work. Uh, terrible. I should have saved it. Is this it? Nah, that's not it. Technical difficulties, technical difficulties. Do you understand? This is it, right? It should be it. It's not loading. Of course not. Of course the one that I'm, I'm trying to play. It's not doing what I need it to do. Yeah, this is it. Because the thumbnail changed, so I couldn't figure out which video it was. But this. Am I late to the party, or is there a version of Falling that I don't have and didn't know came out? Because I need this. I need this version. I tried Shazam in it and it did not pop up. So, what is this? Alicia, we need answers. I need this. As long with the keys and I also need vinyls. Also need that merch. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I want the vinyls. And I want this version of Falling. And I want the keys. 
I want a keychain, a necklace, uh, 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 what else? <laughs> I just want the keys. Give me the keys, Alicia. And give me this version of Fallen because fire. I'm going to just download this and just add it as an interlude on keys and be like part of the album. I feel like that's the piano uh, interlude that, that is keys. But um, yeah, please, Alicia, um, drop that fall in. Uh, 2021 uh, keys version unlocked unlocked yeah let's call it unlocked the unlocked version because i need it <clears throat> um so aside from alicia uh what else did we have on the agenda today i feel like news has been all over the place um i only wanted to talk about alicia keys this whole episode but I feel like I discuss my favorite Alicia records in a previous episode, but um, if we want to run through that, um, whew, let's let's go to my Alicia Keys playlist, which is available on Apple Music. Uh, here's what my top ten Alicia. Keys songs excluding no, it's not excluding because I have some two I have two keys records there already, which is best of me and Lala. But uh top ten or well, the top beginning of my Alicia Keys playlist starts off with uh Piano and I. You don't know my name if I ain't got you featuring Usher. Uh Like You'll Never See Me Again, In Common, Best of Me, La La. Love Looks Better, Authors of Forever, Slow Down, That's How Strong My Love Is, 101, Try Sleeping With a Broken Heart. That's more than 10, but uh, if you want to see the rest of my playlist, uh, find your way on over. I will link my Alicia Keys playlist in the description of this episode, also on YouTube, so check me out. I, I, I love making playlists, so... Every week, uh, well, every time there's new music to be added to my favorite artist playlist, uh, it's exciting because I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to incorporate the rest of these Keys records into my Alicia Keys playlist. So I love, uh, you know, figuring out how the songs flow into each other. So, you know, when I get to figuring out my favorites from the Keys album, um, they will make their way into this playlist. And also, uh, got to organize my, my new shit playlist, which is all of my new songs that are recent. So, uh, the last update I've made to it was when I talked about Alina Perez. Uh, so, yeah, it's overdue for a new update. And Perfect Time is now because we got new Alicia. And I think... Uh, only use my favorite record right now so we'll also link that playlist down in the description below or in the description of apple Podcasts, wherever you are able to see the description if you're listening on oh i'm forgetting the platform uh hold on If you're listening on Podbean, the description is probably also below, but uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know. What else did I have to talk about besides Alicia Keys? I need those keys. Somebody get me those keys if you know, if you know. I got so many tabs open. I'm terrible. I have a hundred tabs open and Apple's update to make tab groups has not panned out to work well for me. And I 
I'm still with 100 tabs open. So, yeah. Um, do we want to talk about news? <sighs> the usual. I'm over talking about um, systematic, you know. So I won't. I've uh, moved away from writing and producing news articles that represented the story because I felt um, the stories were getting repetitive and it's become, it's gotten to the point where I can basically just switch out the names and the entire article will remain the same, which is the last time I wrote about it. Which is like you basically switch out the the names of the people involved, except police officers or whatever situation. You switch out the city, and the story again remains the same. Unfortunately, um, do 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 do. Yep. Yeah, so. I've kind of moved away from writing about uh, culture news, social, show, social injustice, and all of those things, which was what I had been working on for so long. Um, it's just draining and don't want to be in that space to have to think about the same situations again and again. Uh, shit I don't care about Which is a segment on See The Thing Is Speaking of See The Thing Is I got my See The Thing Is uh, Merch for being a, a patron Patron And It's cool I don't know where I'm gonna put it But uh, it just made me think um, let me produce some stuff for See The Thing Is and, you know, be a part of the team over there See The Thing Is. I wish I was still in New York because I did see that Mandy and Bridget were looking for a screen man. And I'm like, yo, I would do it. I could do it. And then I could also do the merch, which is still not off the table. We'll figure it out. I'm going to, um, you know, figure that out. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, a lot of news that I don't care about. Uh, Biden trying to say that student loans aren't canceled and will continue, well, restart in February of next year. Uh, the Tory Lane situation, the Travis Scott situation, uh, Kanye West and Drake tour don't care about uh, la 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 none of this shit I care about uh, a lot of Kid Cudi stuff that I haven't uh, checked out yet I'm still mad I haven't got my Kid Cudi Man on the Moon 3 vinyl yet um, that I ordered uh, last year <laughs> Uh, they did back in April say that stuff will be delayed till December. It is now December, so are we getting those vinyls? Because if not, uh, I would like my money back. So yeah, haven't checked out the doc, haven't checked out any of the new stuff. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, I just got, you know, a lot of... Uh, Endeavors that have taken place over the course of the year following Man on the Man, Man on the Moon Three. It's kind of like, all right, cool. You got all of this stuff that you're working on, all of these deals, all of these merch drops. But uh, what about the album? <laughs> um, is it that hard to get a vinyl pressed and distributed? I don't know. Um, I ordered uh, Dawn's um, vinyl, 
when she announced it before her album and it came the day of her album release. So I just, I don't know, Dawn's independent. So uh, I just don't know what what's happening with the vinyls and why it's delayed so much. But I will wait till December 17th and see if the vinyls happen to ship. But if not, um, uh, uh, and again, Ashanti's back in the news. Uh, I talked about this in the last episode about how uh, she's trying to re-record her first album because now it's been 20 years and under the cover laws of her deal ending 20 years or whatever, she can now re-record it and now own those masters. So she's going ahead with that and Irv Gotti is still not happy about it. Which was interesting because on The Breakfast Club, they did ask a question that I was wondering, which was, was there a process where she could have renegotiated her deal and got back her masters? And don't sound like that was likely. So I don't know what Irv Gotti's position is on why he's trying to not like uh, work this out. But again, she has a documentary coming that she's working on. So it's like, again, that puts the whole Murder, Inc. situation up in the air because you want to be a fuckhead and not just figure shit out, uh, which is stupid. Um, I guess it's all business, but... uh, when you see, like I said in the last episode, at the Ja Rule versus, you see him bringing all of his uh, collab- collaborated collaborators to the stage. You see the little mode. You see Charlie, oh, not Charlie. Charlie wanted to be there, but she got told at the last second. Uh, Vita, Ashanti. Uh, you see Ashanti on tour. Lloyd also being on tour. You see, like, the camaraderie with all of the artists that was part of Murder, Inc., uh, except uh, Black Child and all of them. Um, but you see that we're kind of moving towards what could be a reunion for Murder, Inc., or you can see some kind of uh, thing happening with the entire group, and Irv Gotti seems to be the one that's preventing that from happening. Um <sighs> But again, they did bring up if there was a Murder, Inc. uh, documentary, now we're in a position where either Ashanti isn't a part of it or Irv Gotti isn't a part of it, which is stupid because everyone was integral, an integral part of um, that Murder, Inc. era, so... At this point, uh, it's time to like let stuff go and grow. You got all this other stuff going on, so why are we like holding on to stuff that happened in the past and preventing any in future endeavors for everyone? <sighs> but that's uh, that, that's just the way it goes. Some days you have no control, as Frank Ocean said. Uh, the Jesse Smollett um, case, yeah, don't care about that. I uh, feel like we're we're getting a lot of attention and a lot of backlash with that situation, and it's just like um, this dude could travel across state lines and murder people and get away with it. This one, who knows what the actual story is, but uh, lying to the police, I guess. Why are we making a big deal about it? No one was actually hurt. No one was killed. <laughs> no one died. Um, but uh, yeah, and then um, I did see the Tory Lanez uh, thing. There was a post today that said, he said dance bitch as he proceeded to shoot the ground, which resulted in Megan the Stallion getting shot. Um, a lot of people don't have the energy that they have towards some things like this Jesse Smollett case. 
everyone is uh yeah basically uh joking about it and canceling him but a serious situation as Tory Lane's situation with Megan Thee Stallion where Megan did end up shot everyone is still like oh I don't believe it oh he didn't do that that didn't happen she must have did this this must have happened why would he do that instead of just listening to the facts that are being presented but you know how that goes you know how that goes everyone is picky about what they choose to be mad at everyone is picky about who they choose to cancel and how long they choose to cancel them and uh, more shit I don't care about uh, I should get into a recap of the shows that I've been watching but I feel like uh, it's been so much Insecure is ending uh, we got two episodes left and I feel like a lot of people are saying excuse me a lot of people are saying this season is boring <laughs> While it is having it's like it's slower than the previous seasons, the story and the progression of the things that are happening makes sense for the story. So again, as with life, you grow and you move towards your goals and thing doors start to open for you and things start to happen. So you're not in the same space as you were five years ago. So let's say uh, insecure is a timeline and the beginning is you in your career and now you see five years later uh, you decided to make changes you decided to do whatever you wanted to do whatever dreams you had and now you're starting to see uh, things start to happen because you made specific choices so I feel like the story is in line with what would probably happen in the situation. Uh, people aren't happy with the story jumping ahead and like the time jumps and moving towards an end. But I feel like as the show is coming to an end, it, it's, it makes sense. And then we'll see an overall sense of maybe she is no longer insecure by the end. And she, everything that she wanted and everything that she's uh, debating over will make sense. And she'll be happy with the decisions that she's made. Uh, off t I'm just, you know, no set list, no... Uh, kind of outline of where I'm going with this podcast, but <laughs> interesting topic came up on Twitter. Well, when L.A. Reid uh, said that he wanted to see Beyonce in a versus with Mariah Carey. <sighs> Gotta put the drink down for this one. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, I don't get it. Mariah Carey is not underrated at all. So I think that was L.A. Reid's take that um, Mariah is underrated. But I feel what he meant to say was in, in the ratings of everyone's favorite artists, you see there is a level of Beyonce being the queen of R&B. She's at the top. Every artist that is out is compared to Beyonce and the levels that Beyonce has obtained is every, everyone is, um, everyone that comes out basically is put against a Beyonce or compared to Beyonce. You got the new generation, you got Normani, you got Chloe, you got all of these artists that come out and they look up to Beyonce or they are compared to Beyonce. So I feel like what he meant was Mariah is underrated in that regard. You don't get a lot. I mean, you do, but I don't know. You don't get as many uh, comparisons or putting Beyonce on this uh, pedestal that you get with Mariah Carey. 
Yeah, we did get uh, when Ariana Grande came out, the comparisons to Mariah. When Leona Lewis came out, the comparisons to Mariah. Uh, but I feel like what he meant, again, was that uh, Beyonce has been put on this queen pedestal that she is the best, she is the top artist, and no one is close to Beyonce, and Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of this generation. That's where I get him saying Mariah is underrated. But uh, as far as the hits go, <laughs> Mariah has a, a record for the most number one hits. Or she's in the top couple of artists that has the most number one hits. So uh, can Mariah be considered underrated when you think of how many number one hits Mariah has? Uh, there's a whole holiday season now that is Mariah's season. And yeah, so I don't feel like uh, there is no underrated when it comes to Mariah Carey. Uh, I think people, what do you call it? Like uh, when a couple years ago, maybe 10 years ago, a while back when... Uh, Mariah's live performance wasn't what it used to be. Uh, I think people kind of counted out a lot of her later work that happened recently because they're still harping on uh, the bad performances and not being able to hit the high notes like she used to. So another reason why I would feel someone would say Mariah's underrated. But <sighs> getting into... The hits, I'm biased, so uh, I like both Mariah and Beyonce, but unpopular opinion and probably not a popular take, um, I don't feel like Beyonce's music has aged well. And I only say that because... I'll, I'll link my Beyonce playlist in the description as well. But uh, maybe I need to fix it up again. But a lot of the newer records, uh, I find it hard to arrange them with the older records. So my playlist is usually... A lot of the newer stuff versus the older stuff being fall into the wayside and not included because they don't fit into the songs that I have as my favorite. So with the first album, I would love if Beyonce, speaking of re-recording albums, if Beyonce re-recorded Dangerously in Love. And we hear what it would sound like new and fresh and of today's Beyonce. Uh, I think that would change my perception. But uh, of the first album, I feel like Speechless and Yes are the only records that I keep in rotation. <laughs> so in terms of a verses... Yeah, the songs are uh, Crazy in Love, Baby Baby Boy, Naughty Girl, Me, Myself, and I. Yeah, they are classics, but for me, I don't think they would hit as hard as I would, whatever Mariah Carey would play against those records. And then there are a lot of songs like, uh, I mean... Mariah has a lot of hits, so a lot of uh, what does Beyonce play against certain Mariah songs and then certain Beyonce songs, what does Mariah play? And then, again, I seen a tweet that was like, first off, Versus can't afford both Mariah and Beyonce at the same time. <laughs> Second, um, it would be interesting to see a concert with both Mariah and Beyonce on it to see the level of stage presence the level of set design like all the pieces that make up a Beyonce show 
fused in with all of the things that makes a Mariah Carey show. That would make for excellent verses. That would make verses something different. Because as of now, it's just you play your record, I play your record, you perform, I sing a little bit over the record, they perform and sing a little bit over the record back and forth. But if we had an actual like Beyonce level verses with performances, dancers, background dancers, Mariah being carried out, uh, you know, all of those elements that we see from their performances, that would be for me what would make it interesting. And that would be what would help win me over as far as some of the records that I no longer listen to. So, yeah, uh, I, it would be interesting. Um, I, I, yeah, I have to fix my Beyonce playlist because a lot of records aren't in here. And I feel like a lot of records hasn't aged well for me that I don't listen to it. And, yeah, I don't can't tell you the last Beyonce record I've heard because I have still... Yet to listen to that King Richard. Uh, I have still, I have yet to listen to the King Richard uh, soundtrack song. So, it would be interesting to hear what it sounds like and see what it sounds like visually. Because a Beyonce concert has to reach a certain level of production <laughs> and that, that I would be interesting to see more than hearing the Beyonce records and then adding Mariah to the equation is another element that I would love to see though people are saying it's unfair because Mariah came out before Beyonce came out but I still feel like it's even even if Beyonce included Destiny's Child records uh I still feel like Mariah has answers for a lot of records that Beyonce could perform. Um, who was the interview that I just seen? Oh, Alicia Keys. Uh, back to Alicia Keys. Um, they asked Alicia Keys what was her thoughts. Uh, DJ Envy forgot that Alicia Keys already had a versus with John Legend. <laughs> uh, and my thoughts on the Alicia Keys John Legend versus is that John Legend kind of held back some of the songs that I expected him to play. And I mean, I love both John Legend and Alicia Keys, but Alicia Keys is on a, a whole level. But uh, I feel like Stronger Records was available for John Legend to play against a lot of Alicia Keys' best songs. And he went for the big name features <laughs> when he had some album cuts that he could have played and... He should have done some, uh, you know, Alicia Keys with her t two pianos. He should have done some crazy live piano playing. And I would have enjoyed that versus a lot more. But Alicia Keys did say if she was to do another versus. I think they brought up uh, who would she do it. And she said Beyonce, Rihanna, or Mary. What did she say, Mary? I think she said Mary. Uh, or Mariah. I don't remember. Uh, but uh, if Alicia Keys was to do another versus, I feel like Beyonce could be a good choice as well. Um, but again, it's like two different styles, same as with Mariah. Um, the set and the stage presence would be what I would look forward to rather than them just playing records against each other. 
I would expect uh, like performances and set design and Alicia Keys gotta have a piano dragged out play a little bit get up dance you know uh, but uh I still feel like that would make it interesting. And then if Alicia Keys do do another verses and it's with Beyonce, uh, please at, at the end of that verses, can uh, Alicia Keys drop the video for Put It In A Love Song that uh, somehow uh, disappeared, got lost in in the editing room and we'd never seen it and we only saw the pictures. <laughs> Uh, I kind of fell off with verses, so I do feel like it is time for an R&B verses. So Alicia Keys, uh, Beyonce, Mariah, Rihanna, uh, Sierra, bring them all to the stage, get a versus, uh, male R&B side. Uh, I still think Trey songs, uh, Usher, Chris Brown. Uh, those are the artists that I'm expecting for verses for male R&B um, Mario as well um, it's a lot of uh, you know male R&B has gotten very underrated and that's another topic another conversation to have but it's time for uh, somebody to you know drop some music and get on this verses and bring us back because what's going on? Where's the music? Where's the music? Crazy. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see. Uh, it'll be excited to see where Versus goes next, but uh, I don't think it'll be Beyonce versus Mariah Carey. And if it is, let's go, because that is a big uh, uh, <laughs> a big uh, step for Versus to take. Uh, the price will definitely go up, and you know, like Fat Joe says, yesterday price. Is not today's price. So if they are able to pull off Beyonce versus Mariah Carey, it's out of here. Uh, who's next after that? Usher. Mm, I don't know. Who else is on Beyonce's level? Mar Mary J. Blige, but she don't want to do it. Uh, interesting. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so before I get out of here, if you haven't already checked out Alicia Keys' Keys album, uh, I will link it down below because for all of y'all who was giving all these other artists the energy, Adele, uh, Silk Sonic, uh, Summer Walker, uh, Alicia Keys need that same energy because this is an album. <laughs> This is an album with no skips. <laughs> this is a project that, you know, songs in a minor, Diary of Alicia Keys, As I Am. This is that. 
So for those who are sleeping on Alicia Keys, uh, do yourself a favor and check out Keys, which is in stores on all streaming platforms now. And if you haven't checked out Alicia, <laughs> go back and listen to that album as well because uh, you're missing out. Um, another solid project, uh, Alicia Keys' eighth studio album, uh, Where the Time Went. Um, I'm excited for it, and I'm happy that it's here. It, it came out of nowhere, but uh, I was looking forward to my December being Alicia Keys filled. And no, I'm not playing Christmas music, and I'm not ready to play anything Christmas-related. So no, I'm not listening to Mariah Carey's Christmas music, except when I'm somewhere and I have no choice but to hear Christmas music. Uh, I thought maybe at some point if I had played or started playing Christmas music, it would feel more like Christmas, but still feels like, uh, the same day over and over and over again, as we are still in a pandemic <laughs> and year three, it feels like 10 years, uh, like we've been here forever, uh. I do have my Christmas decorations up, which is on that side of the room, but uh, that's it. Um, what else before we get out of here? Uh, I should have brought my Alicia Keys book and sat it on my little display table right here. Uh, but yeah. Um, whew, did I have any other thoughts? Uh, as of now, uh, the unlocked version is my favorite, which I'm playing more of. Um, but then once I realize I'm in a, a unlocked loop, I just start the album from the beginning and just listen to all the songs straight through. So, uh, yeah, uh, Alicia Keys might quickly move up in my, um, Apple Music replay because of how many songs I'm playing and how much I'm listening to this album. Um, I am going to fix my Alicia Keys playlist and add some of these new records to it. Stay tuned for that. Um, what else? Oh. Uh, the plan was to get these little merch boxes together for uh, before the holidays, but Depending on how the rest of this week goes, we'll see if uh, I can get these uh, little merch things together. Um, I have a lot of, you know, merch. If you haven't checked us out on ELSV.net slash shop, uh, check out the merch store. Uh, I am trying to get some new designs done, so stay tuned for that. Um, what else? What else we got in the works? Uh, we got some other stuff in the works, but I don't want to talk on it just yet. Uh, we'll see what happens. But, um, if you stay with me through this, uh, chaotic, um, transitioning through all of the stories that I wanted to talk about, uh, thank you. Uh, and, and like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know how you feel about what I've talked about. Uh, and um, what else? I really appreciate it if you would subscribe because you know how YouTube is and uh, Patreon is still a thing that is in the works. So consider uh, becoming a patron. Uh, maybe I'll, that'll uh, push me into producing more content for Patreon. But uh if you want to support me outside of YouTube, uh, I will link a link to my page where you can support me if you want. Um, also started a gaming channel, which I was excited to start streaming myself playing some of my favorite games. Um, it is linked on my channel, so if you check out my YouTube channel you will see the link to my gaming channel, which I've been streaming Resident Evil Village, which I just got because it was on sale. 
And I was, you know, I'm not falling for the trap that I did with Mortal Kombat 11. So I said I wasn't going to buy it until all the stuff was added on. But, um, yeah, I bought it because it was on sale. And I figured, why not stream my first playthrough of Resident Evil Village? So you can catch me playing Resident Evil Village not knowing what the hell to do. Because I haven't watched any tutorials or any walkthroughs to figure out how to beat the game. Uh, it feels like I'm in like a whole new like classic Resident Evil where you really have to just walk around and figure it out. Uh, which is what I loved about not seeing any Resident Evil stuff. Uh, other shit I don't care about is the Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City movie that I was so excited for. And the trailer and the reviews have kind of decided, well, I was already let down when I saw the trailer and then the reviews kind of like sealed the deal for me. I still haven't seen it. Uh, I just feel like I was expecting a whole change for Resident Evil after the Resident Evil movies that I didn't really like. Although I haven't seen them all. So I said uh, the other day that I'm going to finish watching all of them so I can have an accurate opinion <laughs> instead of my bias uh, not liking the films because I haven't even seen all of them. The last one I did see was the one that Ashanti was in. So uh, I still have a biased take on the films. Like I didn't like it and I was hoping... This new film series would be better, but uh, just like they dropped the ball again. As with the animated Netflix series, like dropped the ball again. Uh, hopefully it's renewed and there's more some, some more episodes coming because I don't get why Netflix. Uh, you're pushing that you're, you're producing these con this, uh, this content for these games. And then you launch each season with four episodes. And then soon as you get to, it might be six episodes, but four episodes. Soon as you get, I mean, it takes a while to get into it. And then when you get into it, which is episode four, it's the end. And now you have to wait to see if Netflix renews it or if we're going to get more episodes, which is a total waste of <sighs> Netflix annoys me. And Netflix is... This is the exact reason, alongside not having 4K as a base option, this is the reason why I canceled Netflix. <laughs> like, you're paying for all of this uh, foreign content that you're dubbing in English, but the content that you can make your originals, uh, you put the bare minimum into it, the bare minimum promotion into it, and then when it doesn't do well, Oh, it's because no one streamed it. No, it's because you didn't give these shows the same level of promotion and appeal that some of these foreign uh, dubbed shows have gotten. So it's on you. And then to be like one of the top streaming platforms to produce such poor quality content when you have the budget to do better especially after uh what was it the 100 million dollar uh deal to keep friends on netflix like when you're pushing out that much money and then they didn't even get to keep friends so it's like you done all of that to keep a show and then it's off the the, the, the platform now and all of your original series are either the ones that I've been watching have either been canceled or ended. I just want Netflix to get it together. But at this point, I'm out and I will be watching the Netflix shows that I do want to see in some other way that's not included me buying Netflix again. Not until 4K becomes the base option because again as one of the biggest streaming platforms for tv and movies why is it that the highest tier only has 4k every streaming platform has 4k in their base tier 
Peacock has 4K. Hulu has 4K. HBO Max has 4K. Disney Plus is, you know, Disney Plus. So they got Ultra, whatever. Dolby Cinema, Dolby Atmos, whatever it's called. They got it all. Netflix, uh, I don't get why you don't have 4K as a base option and then go higher as you get the multiple tiers. Like that 4K should be the bare minimum these days. So I don't get why Netflix just exclude that excludes that from the the base tier then they want to keep raising the price so that's another uh, i'm sorry i just got on a rant but uh my gaming channel resident evil uh i was streaming myself playing mortal kombat 11 and backstory on mortal kombat 11 i was pissed off because i bought the platinum premium whatever edition it was which was $99 which included the season pass for all the downloaded content because guess how they got me I was excited that Fujin was finally going to be brought back into Mortal Kombat 11 and they didn't release him till Aftermath and Aftermath re-released the game and now anything that was released after Aftermath was not included in the season pass that was included when I purchased Mortal Kombat 11 Platinum Premium whatever edition it was so I got pissed off and I was like yep I'm not buying anything else Mortal Kombat 11 then Aftermath went on sale Ultimate came out and then I'm like shit I bought Aftermath because it was on sale and guess what five days later ultimate was on sale and i was just like you know i could have just got ultimate and it would have bought me got me everything on sale for the minimum amount of money but no i bought i basically paid for the premium platinum mode combat then aftermath when it was on sale and then ultimate when it was on sale and it was just like all of that and now they're not supporting the game anymore because they've moved on to other projects and it's just like now i'm back into the game uh, can they release one more DLC for us for Christmas and then do Mortal Kombat 12 or whatever they're doing? Uh, I did see some spoilers that Mortal Kombat 12 is in the works and I'm just like, you know, as soon as I start playing the game again, yeah, I want to uh, start on Mortal Kombat 12. But again, uh, yeah, until I get a PS5, I'm still, no. I'm not buying any game when it comes out. I will wait until all of the DLC is out and it is on sale before I buy any game at release date price. Not buying no deluxe versions. I don't need the extra shit. Uh, same thing. I didn't need the extra shit for Resident Evil. Wait, I got the bare minimum. Um, but yeah, that that that's my whole rant. Um, but yeah, check out my gaming gaming stream. I'm going to be playing Resident Evil 8 for the first time. I might may continue streaming. I'm, I'm mad that I didn't start streaming a long time ago. It would have been hilarious to uh, stream Resident Evil, which is one of my favorite games, in real time as I was playing it and as you get jump scared out of all the scary situations, which is why Resident Evil Village is such a hilarious thing to stream. Because you get my real reactions, having not known what's going to happen. So, yeah, outside of Resident Evil 8, I do plan to stream Resident Evil 7, which I was playing on Madhouse and I have stopped playing. But I figured uh, once I get my Resident Evil Village stuff up, uh, I will go back to my previous game of Resident Evil 7 and play Madhouse. Uh... And, of course, Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is one of my favorite games. Resident Evil 2 is my favorite Resident Evil. So, I will probably continue streaming uh, that. Uh, I may get into streaming Pokemon if I figure out the emulation of specific Pokemon uh, games. Because, no, not buying Switch. Uh, not buying, trying to find a 3DS or any of the consoles that have Pokemon. I'm, I, I looked it up today and I'm surprised that none of the games for Nintendo ever goes on sale which is why every time I put 
a Nintendo product in my cart, uh, I get the reasons as to why I don't need or should get one. <sighs> but yeah, aside from all that ranting and introduction to my game channel, I did release the first part of my Resident Evil 8 playlist. Playlist? <laughs> Playthrough. So yeah, check that out. Uh, it's on the channel. I will also link it down below. Um, some other stuff in the works that I will announce and any updates, please subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my, excuse me, subscribe to my mailing list on my website, ELSV.net, and you will be up to date with all the things that are coming with ELSV. Um, what else? Yeah, stay tuned because I have some exciting things that I want to do and I want to announce, but I don't want to announce them prematurely. So I will uh, keep that to myself for now. Um, and again, thank you for checking this out. And if you stay through that part to the end, uh, kudos to you. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for listening to my pod. Uh, you know, we all creators out here and we just trying to uh, make it work. So stay tuned as I work through this and I figure all of this out as we as creatives do. And until the next video, I will catch y'all later. <laughs>